All right. Time to start another game to scare away all the new people. We're starting as Axe, and I got myself uh, Battle Hunger because there's nothing more fun than being Axe and spamming Battle Hunger early game. It's, it's genuinely rewarding. Just give him one or two hits after Battle Hunger, and, and go figure he killed the creep. Doesn't matter what hero I am in Dota now, I can show you how to play him the wrong way. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about this whole minimum wage thing. Because it seems that that's getting a lot more attention lately. Particularly with this whole movement for the 15 or the 17 or whatever. The 50, uh, 50, I think it's 15 bucks an hour minimum wage. So before I get into my thoughts on it, I want to talk on what my past thoughts were on the minimum wage. With my, one of my first real jobs. By real, I mean, you know, you apply for the job, you have a boss and all that stuff. Not like the crap I did where I was washing bikes for minimum wage or any of that stuff. So my first real job is at Model Sporting Goods. I remember interviewing there, and they, he asked me why I wanted to work there, and I said, well, I have a choice between either working at KFC or here, and I would rather clean the windows here with, uh, with a toothbrush than prepare fried chicken at KFC. And the manager laughed, and he hired me the next day. And I got hired at $6 an hour, which was the minimum wage at the time. Now, they also had a union. And the funny thing about the union, one of the reasons that I, from a very young age, learned to have a dislike and distrust for unions, is that once you, they talked about all these union benefits. The only union benefit that actually really affected anybody who worked there was the raise that you got when you entered the union, which is from $6 to $6.175 an hour. 17.5 cent raise an hour. You may think, okay, that sucks, but it's something, right? How can you complain? Well, the union would take something like 10 to 20 bucks out of each paycheck, and the paychecks were weekly. So think about this. You take 20 bucks out of the paycheck. How many additional hours do I have to work for that 17.5 cents to counteract the 20 bucks? So you do 20 divided by 0.17. I mean, what is it, like 80, 90 extra hours I have to work? I have to work a 90-hour week in order for my union dues to be counteracted by the union benefits. So, that, but that, that, that's not the topic of this video. Why I, I, I dislike and distrust unions can be for another video entirely. But I was, I was working for six bucks an hour, which is not a lot of money. And I thought, okay, it's not a lot of money. This job sucks, but it's fine. I'm gonna build myself up. I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna get more experience. And then as I show that I'm an asset to the company and I'm good at my job, I'll make more money, right? Right? I worked there for 14 months. I never got one real raise, no, no promotion, no any of that. And you know, it is what it is. It's a fucking, it's a minimum wage job at a retail sporting goods store. But I, you know, I, but I worked my ass off. I figured out how to increase the daily sales figures. I figured out how to better sell customers and make them actually trust the people who work there. I was able to get more stock out. Not in the beginning, but as time went on. I found creative ways to get more stuff out because what the buyers would do with the stores, they would buy too much stuff. The store is very small. So there would be all this crap sitting in the aisles. Now, there are two issues with that. A, stuff that sits in the aisles can't sell. And B, if it's in the aisles, no, no customer wants to walk down an aisle that's filled with boxes. They just don't. So, you know, people, you know, like the hockey aisle, the, nobody walked down the hockey aisle because you simply could not walk down it. There were so many boxes and crap there, and it looked like employees were working, and people didn't want to feel like they were, they were getting in the way of the employees. <laughs> so I found ways to get stock out and also to stack things. So by the stock room, rather than actually put this, you know, one, two, three, I would stack all the boxes to the ceiling. I would combine what was in the boxes so, uh, so that I could get more stuff to, in the smaller area. I would stack stuff in the stock room freaking 20 feet high. It was insane. And also what I would do is I would find creative ways to put stuff out to standards. So there were very specific merchandising standards. And what I would do is I would say, okay, I can put two things on this peg, but let's say I put one, two, three, four, five. I could put eight items on a peg and it wouldn't look overstuffed because you had the stuff next to it that would kind of flow into it. So I figured out how I could get a lot more stuff out. So when I was working there, you wouldn't see all this crap in the eye. You wouldn't see all this junk it kind of became like a game to me. Can I get every single thing that the buyers bought out, into, that these incompetent buyers bought out into the store? 
And I and I would also do, you know, I would look under the gondolas. So there were these, the gondolas are the things that hold the merchandise. And one of the things that uh, that customers will do if they're trying something out or doesn't want to put something back is they'll throw it under the gondolas because if they do that, they did nothing wrong. And something they'll do if they're stealing, something like that. Or if an employee can't find where something goes and he doesn't want to get written up for putting it in the wrong place, what they'll do is they'll toss it under the gondola. So... Admittedly, I was guilty of that in the beginning, like the, in the beginning of my job. But uh, I would, I wound up moving the gondolas when the, you know, when it was raining outside and there was nothing to do and there were no customers in the store. And I would take every single one of those items, and then I would find SKUs for them in the system and put them on the on the items. So I, all these items that were impossible to sell because they were sitting under a fucking gondola with no barcode on them now had barcodes. They were now entered into the system as inventory that we had, and they could be sold. And yeah, some, some of these were open box items, so you know the people would get discounts on them if they brought them to the counter, but still it's revenue that otherwise wouldn't be made. And I thought if I keep doing this for months and months on end and I show that I really care, that I'll wind up getting like $7 or $8 or $9. I never got any money. And I thought this was bullshit. I thought that the fact that, as a, you know, the 16-year-old me thought, this is crap. You should not be able to pay somebody a wage that's not livable. This is slave labor. Screw this. This is wrong. That was the anarchist 16-year-old me. And there was one day at this job where I wound up, um, where, oh, what happened? It was, it was the, the air conditioner stopped working. The air conditioner stopped working. And this, this place had like aluminum roofing. It, 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 was, it was boiling. And you wore, at Model Sporting Goods, you wore a polyester jersey and a name tag. And the polyester jersey went on top of my standard clothes. I'm not going to go to work without a shirt on just so that I can only wear one layer of clothes. I relied on the fact that they had air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, I know I didn't get my ultimate, but I don't plan on doing, I don't plan on doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one combat this early, particularly with this guy in my lane that runs away every time there's a real fight to be had. But anyway, although it may have just come in handy. Oh, well. I feel like there's somebody hiding over there. We'll see. I think I can get this guy. Oh, yeah, battle hunger. You're done for. You're done. You're done. Yeah, GTFO. I'm going to go back since I remember some guy waiting over here. All right, so anyway. There was, there was a, it was like 100 degrees in here. And you know, you know what New York heat is like. It's not like heat in other places where it's not ridiculously humid. Like heat in New York, when it's 100 degrees in New York, you just want to die. You know, just between the humidity, the fucking pollution everywhere, everything smelling like shit, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's garbage. So that day that I was there, this is about 13, 14 months into work, I didn't have my, uh, my, my jersey on. I had my name tag, and I was still walking up to customers and going, is there anything you need help with? How can I help you? Need any help? And I was still doing my job. I just didn't have the Model shirt on because it's, it's, it's fucking polyester jersey. It's 100 degrees and your air condition doesn't work. And the manager kept yelling at me to put it on. And then he says something like, oh, quit being a sissy or whatever and put it on. And I, I was about to put in my two weeks to try to debate, you know, going for this new data entry job that paid something like $12 an hour for good temps. You know, it wasn't really a short sure thing yet. But I wound up saying my piece to the, to the assistant manager there at the time. And after I said my piece, I no longer, you know, I, I didn't work there anymore. And the reason that I, I was able to do that is because I realized, okay, I get that I'm not going anywhere. I realize there's no new positions available. And, but, I, and, and, but now I'm being treated like shit. Like before, at the very least, before the, you know, it, it wasn't a lot of money, but I, I could go back and forth with the manager that was there. We, you know, again, sometimes he was a dick. That it's a manager's job to be a dick. But you know, but, but there was a, some level of mutual respect. You know, he he was the type of manager that genuinely cared about the standards and the rules. But if it's 100 degrees, he's not going to tell you you need to wear the Model shirt. He's going to say, you know, he, he's going to he's going to care about the shit that matters. He's going to care about is the merchandise out. He's going to care about is the store clean. He's going to care about is this set up to standards, but, but he's not going to give a shit about me not wearing a jersey. This other guy, he's just a complete fucking douchebag, and he's bitching at me about the fact that I'm not wearing my Models jersey. Um, so I quit, you know? I, it's like, fuck this. So I, and the reason I was able to do that is I realized, okay, if I'm working with people I like, but I'm not making a living, this sucks balls, but fine. But if I'm not going to make enough money to pay for my basic lifestyle, and I'm being treated like shit, then what the fuck is the point? So I quit, and I went to find a new job. And then I went to find it, and, and I thought this minimum wage thing was terribly unfair, terrible thing, awful thing. 
and I went to get a job at, at uh, 3P Delivery for Lowe's. This was back when their system, this is 2006, this is ancient times. You wanna know how, how, how old I am? I, I was old enough to have a job back when their ordering system was so convoluted that we would receive faxes of the store orders and I had to enter those faxes into 3P Delivery system. I know this seems so fucked up because we live in a day and age right now where even a bum like me can put up a website, have all that website's orders directly put into a Shiprush database, which automatically prints out a shipping label for the exact postage, weight, everything that and shipping method that that item is need, uses. Why a fucking computer? Here, I'm getting faxes with order information, and I'm manually typing those. Well, why are you committing suicide, man? Why? Why are you committing suicide? Why? I don't get it. I don't get why some people just kill themselves in this game. Like, say something. Ping. If you're going to do two versus one. What the fuck? Anyway. So I get this job, and my job is to type in the orders. For that, you know, so if you bought, uh, you bought, you know, some, some uh, like a barbecue or some shit from Lowe's, uh, you know, I had to type the order information in, and then once I was done type, hand typing the fax, by the way, I don't know how many of you are familiar with fax machines. It's some of the worst technology on earth because it relies on the printing quality of the fax machine and the scanning quality of the fax machine on the other end, both of which are complete fucking garbage at most businesses. So I would get this sheet that looked like it was, you know, I mean, this... It, this is, I mean, like, the, the, you, the stuff that you see written on, you know, on the walls of the Egyptian pyramids is more legible than this horse shit. It's just, just total fucking garbage. And I would have to type that into the delivery system. So I would type it in, and then I had to call the customer to tell them when they were going to be getting their stuff. So there was a, some program or something that would, you know, route the, you know, the who got what at what time based on what the most efficient route for the driver was. People didn't really like this. You know, again, if you have a job where you have to go to work from 9 to 5 or 12 to 8 or 4 to 12, you're not going to like when somebody like me calls and says, hey, your delivery is coming between 7 and 5 because that ruins your day. But it was my job to call all these people. And I would call them and they would scream that they needed a new delivery time. I couldn't provide them that. It was my job to make them happy. The thing is I had zero, and I, when I say zero, I mean zero power to change the delivery time. There's nothing I could do. I could just go back and forth and say, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, there's nothing else I can do. Would you like to, uh, you know, just cancel your order, do store pickup? There's nothing I could do. There was genuinely, like, there's nobody to escalate it to. So eventually I just got to this point. Everybody there learned what, what to do, which is to go, excuse me, I'm sorry. Are you breaking up? <laughs> Anybody there? Okay. I can't you you hear me? I can't hear you. You know, you you would just sound like a broken telephone, and um, you'd hang up on them. And then when they called back in the caller ID, you'd pick up and hang up very immediately, like so that nobody heard or phone ring. And after two or three times of that, they would just give up. And at that point, they would call the store to bitch and cancel their order. But, by the, but that store would then not, again, it was separation. This is a third-party delivery company. They wouldn't know how to contact us or anything. So then it would go back to being the store's problem, which, was, which, which, which is great. It's not no longer my problem. So that's what everybody did there. Anyway, so I wound up taking two days off because I had a 102 fever, and 102 or 103 fever, and I was, I was feeling very sick. And because of that, I wound up getting uh, fired for excessive absences. And, and, and everybody told me that if I took days off, I'd get fired. It's just what they do. The company was called 3P Delivery. Total man, shitbox. But anyway, so I got fired from that. And then I went to find a new job at the, um, at the Staten Island Mall uh, through Good Temps. It was $9 an hour now, still better than 6 I was unboxing furniture, and then I was putting, assembling the furniture and putting it out into the, into the room. I worked for this old guy who really... He really just seemed, he was kind of like me as a boss where he's like, rather than me explain everything to you, which I have no patience for, just figure it out on your own. And as, if you fuck something up that's tiny, I'll help you. If you fuck something up that's big, then God help you. So I wind up putting all the furniture out. I take the boxes and everything to the bail machine. Never used a bail machine before. Use the bail machine. Shouldn't have been using the bail machine because I'm 17. That's, that's not legal. But anyway, I go to use the bail machine and I... Uh, and I don't know if the bail machine at the Staten Island Mall sucked or if I just suck at using the bail machine, but I fucked up the bail machine. 
I'm, I'm guessing that what happened is that the mall fined him like a couple of hundred bucks. Then he yelled at good temps for sending them an idiot that fucked up the bail machine. And then I got fired. And, I, and, and, you know, eventually I found, you know, uh, I got an internship at Avatar Studios. I was working at another smaller studio. And then I got a tech job at Avatar Studios. And then I left off to do freelance work. And then after that, I uh, started my business with the laptop thing, opened the store, and continued building that. And I look back on it, and when I was a teenager, I hated minimum wage. I thought minimum wage was unfair because I couldn't make a living. How is it that this multi-million dollar company that makes millions of dollars can't pay all of us just an extra three bucks an hour or so so we can make a living? This is a travesty. And what I'm realizing, the real blessing is, as a 27-year-old, the reason I realize this is a blessing is because I realize that I am not a greedy person. And the reason that this is something that I mentioned, that I'm not a, intention, you know, a very greedy person, is that I would have, I'm not saying this as a plus, like I'm so great. I'm saying it as just the reality. I don't, I don't wear expensive clothes. This shirt costs $5. These socks cost a dollar. I, uh, I, you know, I, don't, I don't own a car. I don't own a home. I don't go on vacation to places, you know, not fancy places. It takes very little to make me happy. Give me my cat, Blackberry. Give me my cat Blackberry. Give me my Axiom M22 speakers uh, that I bought, used when I was 16 years old. My computer, an internet connection, and food. And, and honestly, I'm, I'm as happy as a pig in shit, really. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot in, in, to make me happy in terms of monetary value. Again, give me the internet, give me speakers, give me a working computer, give me my little kitty cat the ability to go running, exercise in the park, and new challenges and new problems to solve. And I'm a happy guy. It doesn't take a lot in terms of money. So since it doesn't take a lot in terms of money to make me happy, if my minimum, and you know, in the time, my dad and I had lived in this apartment that was about 900 bucks a month. If I made 15 bucks an hour, I would have been totally fine. I could have even lived in my own apartment in that same shitty building. It was a shitty building, but again, go back to the fact that, I, that that's not something that matters to me. What matters to me is not whether the building is shitty. What matters to me is, do I have the type of neighbors that are going to bitch about my music? If I don't have neighbors that are going to bitch when I decide to turn my music up, I don't care. I don't, you know, I, my idea of a good or a bad apartment is not what your idea is. My idea of a good apartment is a room with air conditioning, internet speakers, and a working bathroom. It doesn't take a lot to make me happy. So since it doesn't take a lot to make me happy, would I have quit the job if it was $15 an hour versus $6 an hour? If it was $6, at $6 an hour, I can't afford to pay my rent. I can't afford anything. $6 an hour is garbage. So because $6 an hour is garbage, I refuse to stay when my boss started treating me like shit. But at 15 bucks an hour, even if my boss treated me like shit, I'd have to think to myself, okay, this guy's a dick, but he's paying me a living wage. He's, uh, I may have moved away from my dad earlier than I did. I moved out around 19 or uh, 20. I moved away from my dad when I was 19 or 20, but I may have moved out maybe 17, 18 and, and uh, had more expenses as a result of it had I had a higher salary. So if this guy, if, I've, if me quitting now, it doesn't just mean that, okay, things are going to be tough until I find a new job. It's going to be, okay, you're going to fucking starve and live on the street. Then it would have been a little different. I probably would have stayed at that job because, again, 15 bucks an hour for the lifestyle I had at the time, that it really could support that. So when I look back on it now, if minimum wage were enough to support my life, if the worst job in the world could support my life, because... I don't need much to be happy. I may have very well still had that shit job. Don't get killed by Dro Ranger. Don't get killed by Dro Ranger. Oh, I almost got killed by Dro. Oh, wait. No, we're going to kill it. Get the f. Oh, no, it's a trap, motherfucker. No. Cock blower. I got greedy. That whole speech about not being greedy. And what the fuck do I do? It's bullshit. Hypocrite. Somebody make a Lewis exposed video. You don't really need to do an exposed video. It's pretty obvious that I suck at this game. <laughs> I haven't been good at Dota since 2006. 
There's something about pursuing something in the real world that starts to make you shittier at video games. Something about working 17 hours a day that takes away my time to play this game. But I'm going to get good at this game again. I don't care if I have to cancel all the classes that I have scheduled. <laughs> all the good stuff. Anyway, so my point is if, I had, if, if that was a job that paid my wage, I would have just, I would have stayed there. And there's a very good chance that right now at 27 years old, I could be putting price tags on basketballs, answering to a dickhead manager and a polyester jersey that had somebody else's name on it. Instead of running a company, teaching hundreds of thousands of people how to do electronics repair, eradicating error 53, fighting and advocating for the right to repair bill, employing four people at a store in Manhattan, having this channel, all this shit could have not happened if minimum wage was 15 bucks an hour. So that's why at 27 years old, I'm totally okay with minimum wage not being $15 an hour. Whereas at 16 and 17, I demanded that minimum wage be 16 to 17 bucks, I mean 15 bucks an hour. Because I mean, just the idea of minimum wage being that high, then it's like, you get, that job, when I was, I thought that that job was supposed to be something that allowed me to live. That job is supposed to be the motivation to learn board repair. That job is the motivation to figure out how to fix consoles and tape machines. It was the motivation to have an internship for, you know, 60 to 80 hours a week. And memories of what it was like to make $6 an hour working for a dickhead in a polyester jersey in an unair conditioned store is the motivation for me right now to just learn, try and learn C. Like right now, I have a good business going for myself, but and I, I have a good business, but I do the YouTube videos. There's the YouTube videos and there's the tutoring. There's the tutoring, then there's the selling flux and other stuff. There's the selling flux and stuff, and then there's the Amazon affiliate program. There's the Amazon affiliate program, and then there's me deciding I want to learn a programming language so that several years from now I can do genuine productive things with it. Even though I have a business that makes me a living, I continue to move forward, I continue to try for more, because even 10 years later, that memory is still in my head of just how much it sucks balls to work at Modell's fucking sporting goods. Or to be the dude, you know, taking furniture out and building it and bailing it into the boxes and all that crap for close to minimum wage. The memory of how bad a minimum wage job in provides me with genuine drive to do better. And that's why I'm, I appreciate it. If minimum, wage were, if minimum wage were good enough, that's the thing. I would have stuck with good enough. How high a chance there is that I would have never lived up to anywhere near my full potential. And I still don't think that I live up to even more than half my full potential now. But at least I'm living up to something, a quarter of it, rather than just nothing. And then there comes the argument from the employer's point of view. And this is the point where a lot of people are probably going to get mad. But I'm just saying what a lot of other people who are employers are, are probably thinking. So I like to talk on this channel about how I believe in paying people a living wage. I'm not, I'm not saying that anybody's living in Trump Tower or, you know, on, uh, on Fifth Avenue for, or, you know, on Park Avenue, maybe the Park Avenue in Brooklyn, from, from what I pay. I run a small electronics repair shop. There's a cap to how much I can afford to pay people, and there's a cap to how much it makes sense to pay people. But I do believe in paying, if, if I expect somebody to do a job where, where they take accountability and responsibility and genuinely care, Blackberry, you're blocking the mini-map, girl. Blackberry, you're blocking the mini-map, girl. You're going to get me killed. Come here. Come here, kitty. Come here, kitty. Good kitty. So I do believe in paying people that type of wage. Oh, you got clinks killed. I couldn't protect them. Cause... Kitty. Gah. Kitty. Come on, stay on your chair, girl. Now, I believe in paying those, you know, wages where somebody could live in their apartment. I want people to be able to pay for their apartment rent and be able to have some type of life off of living here. You're not going to have an apartment on Fifth Avenue off of working at a small electronics store. Shit, you're not going to have an apartment on Fifth Avenue being the manager of a big electronics store. <laughs> the way rent's going. There are so many places in Manhattan where it's like, wow, I really wouldn't want to live there, and it's 4000 bucks a month. This really is becoming like the playground for the 1%, but I digress. But I, there, are, there are also employees that I've had that were around minimum wage or close to minimum wage. And here's the thing with people that are around minimum wage. 
There are certain jobs that will simply go away if you, if you uh, make minimum wage higher. And it doesn't have to do with greed. It doesn't have to do with me being an asshole. But there are simple jobs where I, I, I could literally do it myself in an hour or so. So for example, when I used to have the, uh, the supply company, uh, there were, we, we noticed that there, if you used free shipping, depending on the item you ordered and the weight of the item in your location, sometimes FedEx Smart Post, FedEx Grounds, uh, Priority Mail, uh, or, uh, would be cheaper. So you had the three, different, the three different ways of shipping it. Now, if you went through each item, you could actually save something like $1.50 per shipping by just choosing the shipping option based on the customer location and quantity rather than just automatically picking. And I noticed that, that if you're shipping hundreds and hundreds of items a day, that can easily add up. Now it takes time to do it. It takes, it, it takes me being quick, maybe an extra 30 to 45 minutes to do it. And there was this one person that, would, that, that came in every day and he, he was interested in work. He just needed a job, something to keep his mind occupied. And I didn't have anything. I genuinely didn't have any jobs. I wound up giving him this job of just simply going through everything, not even packaging the items, just printing the shipping labels and then sorting the shipping labels. Labels by the, uh, oh, everybody here's getting raped. We're getting raped. I'm about to get raped if I don't run away. So I will run. Motherfucker. Come on, let me run. Let me run. No, they got too much slow. I'm fucked. Am I fucked? Do I have a chance? Am I gonna get away? Is Dro gonna slow me? Oh. This entire team is filled with people who can slow me. That, that wasn't Dro, that was Phantom Assassin, but still. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Anyway, that was a job that where it was, if I could pay somebody nine bucks an hour, fine. Because when you add everything up, that's probably what they're gonna be saving. So nine bucks an hour. But if you say that that job now is to be $15 an hour, it simply doesn't make sense. I could spend 45 minutes of my day doing that. It's not worth it to me to pay somebody 15 bucks an hour for something I can literally do myself. That job is not a job that is a $15 an hour skill. And it's not about greed. It's not about me saying, I need more money in my pocket. Let's screw this person over. It's genuinely um, it, an issue of that job doesn't even need to exist. I don't need that job. That is not a necessity. That is a luxury. And because it's a luxury, if you now make that luxury more expensive, I'm not going to care anymore. Again, if you make HBO cost four times as much now as it, as it usually would, HBO is not a necessity for your life. It's, it's a luxury. If you don't need HBO and they quadruple the price on you, you're simply going to get rid of it. It doesn't make you greedy. That just makes you an educated consumer. Or another example. There was, a, there was somebody who, um, who didn't work, doesn't work here anymore, and after they didn't work here anymore, somebody else was picking up the slack and doing a lot of work. Oh, let's get this fucker. Oh, fucking shit. I thought my ult would do something. My ult did nothing. He didn't even feel my ult. It, like, took away this much HP. Anyway. <coughs> so, there's another, there's somebody who worked here who was picking up a lot of the slack. And we were all picking up the slack, but one person was picking it up more than everybody else. And one day I come to work and there's somebody sitting in her chair and I go, hi. And they don't look at me. And I go, I say, I'm in here. Say their name. And it's like, oh, you're not in here. He goes, no. I'm like, who are you? He goes, I assistant. I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm her assistant. And I'm like, oh. So then, so then my, my receptionist comes in and I go, Hi, I'm like, come, come, come in, sit down. She goes, what? Just, just come sit down. I'm like, who's that? He goes, oh, that's my assistant. And I'm like, you hired an assistant, did you? And he goes, oh, yes, that's my assistant. I'm like, you ever got any... <laughs> This is funny because it's like, I don't, I don't remember hiring somebody. But you hired somebody. He's like, yes. And it, admittedly, admittedly, she, she, she deserved a fucking assistant. She, she, she genuinely did. She works her ass off and that person really... There should be somebody there to help with some of these, some of these lower level jumps. Now, this person doesn't uh, speak the best English. They, they, they grew up in the same town. Uh, she's now living with her. They used to be friends. 
she came here and she and, and that's where she, and uh, she didn't have a job. So what what she does, she she literally does nothing other than put back together the machines that I that we don't fix. So if a device is no fix, or if I fix a motherboard and it works, and I see the fan spin and the screen come on, she reassembles it. That's what she does. That's all she does. She doesn't know much about the internal workings of the devices, how to diagnose them. She does, since she doesn't know that, she can't really sell people since the English is, she's actually learning English pretty damn quick. I will say that she is much better at, she speaks English a lot better than the people that I had to speak to at Hacko Warranty Service to get my iron fixed. I'm not kidding, I'm, I'm genuinely serious there. We were joking about that the other day, but that's the fucking truth. She's learning English very, very quickly and is very good. But she's, you know, she's not gonna be able to do customer service. So when I think about it, you have this, this individual that is actually very good at picking up how to put everything back together, can't diagnose anything, doesn't have computer experience, doesn't have electronics experience, can't deal with customers, can't quote people. And you have to ask the question of what is that worth? If that job will require it to be 15 or 17 bucks an hour, I would simply say, no, I, I, I'll just do it myself. To me, that is a luxury. Having her here is a luxury. It's, I don't have to reassemble the thing after I fix the board. When I'm done fixing a motherboard, I can then f finish the video, show you that it works, then move on to the next video of me fixing another board. So her, you know, her being here is a luxury. I could easily put that stuff back together. It would take another five or 10 minutes of my time. It's just five or 10 minutes of my time that at this point, I don't feel like spending. I've been doing this for, you know, I've been doing this for like seven, 10 years now. I'm, I, want a, I want a little bit of luxury. But, it's, but again, it's a luxury. It's not, it's not a necessity. So if you raise the minimum wage to something like 15 or 17 bucks an hour, that person no longer has a job. And it's not because I'm trying to be mean and greedy, it's just, it's business. I have to be able to provide a competitive service to my customers. And one of the, people will always say, Lewis, your prices are high. Lewis, why is a board to pay three or $400? Lewis, why is this, this, that, or the other? Blah, 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 blah. Why are the prices what they are? Why, you know, and the reason my prices are what they are is I pay my employees on the books. And I also pay the employees on the books at a living wage. There is, every time people lowball me on certain stuff, I will happily refer them to a place that I know that doesn't pay people on the books, that is uh, paying them less than what I would rent my bathroom out for. And they're able to provide a more competitive service. They're able to provide a more competitive price because they're paying people less. I need to balance everything. So I need to be, I want to pay my employees living wages, but I also want to provide a fair price. That is very, very difficult to do. Very difficult with a new business, paying living wages while doing that, which means that I simply cannot pay $15 an hour for fluff. So it's not about greed. It's simply put, if you raise minimum wage to $15 or $17 an hour, and I look, at, and I look around and I have somebody who's really, really good at this basic job, but who cannot speak to customers, who cannot diagnose, who can't do serious repairs, in order to remain competitive, I need to cut that individual or I need them to start doing work on my level so that I can do more advertising, get more business, and fuck, I could have killed him with the ultimate, but motherfucker. Oh, well. That, that's just what it is. So I will, if I'm forced to raise the wage, I'm simply going to tell that person, you need to start working at my level tomorrow or you need to go. And you could say, oh, Lewis, you need to, no, 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 no. You need to provide training. But if you raise minimum wage 17 bucks an hour, do I need to provide training? Because at 17 an hour, I could hire somebody who already has the skill set. At $9 an hour, I can hire somebody who doesn't have the skill set and I can then teach them. But at 17 an hour, again, it, I have to provide a competitive service to my customers. Each second that I spend training somebody is a second that I spend not making money. So at 17 an hour, I can simply hire somebody who already has that skill set. So why would I keep the person who doesn't? It's just business. And anytime somebody starts talking about greed, 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 I start talking about competitiveness. I start talking about all the individuals who, yes, they're not the business owner, but they're the same people that are going to say, you need to lower your prices. It's... It's, it goes around full circle. So I would wind up telling that person, I'm sorry, you have to go. And that's a real shame because this individual started here barely speaking English 
Now they're speaking much better English. And also one of the things I realized is that some of the issues of the holes in the English, it wasn't so much an issue with English as it was an issue with shyness. And as anybody who works with me, for me knows, you don't get to work with me and be shy for a very long time. It just, it doesn't work. You may not like people, but you're not going to be shy. I lost, oh my God, we lost 51 to 17. That is, that is sad. At least it gives me an opportunity to close the game and put this full screen, much better in full screen. Here we go. But yeah, you, you don't get to work with me and be shy. So this individual is learning better how to deal with people. They're learning how all this stuff goes together. They are develop, and you could put this on your resume. I'm becoming better dealing with customers. I'm now uh, adept at reassembling these types of machines. I'm a good problem solver. My English is better. So even if you don't want to advance within my company, because some people are gonna say, Lewis, maybe this person just doesn't want to advance with you. Even if this individual does not wish to advance within my business, they can now take this to another business. Think about it, if you just moved here, and this is a legal immigrant, by the way, I don't wanna hear any of this shit about you know, theft and blah, blah. If you take somebody that doesn't have much of a skill set, doesn't have much education, doesn't have much experience, and you make it that the minimum wage is 15 bucks an hour, it's gonna be harder for them to get a job. You have to work the shit jobs to get experience. You have to put price tags on basketballs for $6 an hour before a studio is going to give you an internship for free, that kind of thing. I learned a lot from that $6 an hour job. I learned the value of balancing everybody's needs. I need to get all this stuff out of the aisle, but I also need to put out the merchandise to standards. How can I mold those standards or work within those standards to put out all this shit that they bought that they weren't supposed to buy? How can I clean the entire store when I have less than 20 minutes to do so to these standards? It taught me how to be flexible and it taught me how to work within the system. That job sucked balls. Making $6 an hour was bullshit, but everything that I learned at that job about how to deal with customers, how to sell customers, how to deal with management, how to deal with my coworkers, I took that with me to the next job. These are all skill sets that you learn working these shit jobs. You're not supposed to stay at the shit job. You're supposed to work at the shit job just long enough to take that experience somewhere else. And that's what I was able to do. So this individual working for me at the nine or the 10 or the 11 bucks an hour, which is below the 15 an hour minimum wage, yeah, that may not be a living wage, but what they're offering me right now is simply fundamentally within the confines of my business, not worth 15 to 17 an hour. And I've paid people 18, I've paid people 21, I've paid people 24, I've paid people $30 an hour before. I'm not a business person that believes that I need to make all the money while everybody who works for me should live in poverty. But it has to make sense. So this person working for me may not be able to do all these things, but in six months from now, they may be able to. And once they're able to, now I'll be able to offer them the 15 or the 17 or the 19 or the 21. I've started people at 10 bucks an hour and then started making 21. I'm happy to do that, but you have to learn. And while you're learning, you're probably not gonna be worth that 15 or 17 or $21 an hour. So this person, even if they don't wanna stick with my company, as they learn all these new skill sets, they can go somewhere else. If she is much more articulate when speaking to customers, if she's more able to deal with irate customers, if she's better at figuring out how, you know, yeah, like if, let's say she wants to go work at Macy's or something. You know, you know how much of a pain in the ass it is to get those, those security tags off the shirt? I know it's a pain in the ass because half the time I shop at Macy's, I gotta go back to Macy's because they forgot to take some of them off the shirt. If you know how to replace a retina screen without breaking it at the ends of this, or you know how to take out the rivets in the retina keyboard, you can pass that on. That's gonna help you somewhere in life. That's gonna help you somewhere in the next job. And if it does, now you have that experience that you can put on your resume so you can get a better job but you wouldn't have that experience to put on your resume. I wouldn't have a year and a half of experience at Modell Sporting Goods to put on my resume if minimum wage were $15 an hour. It's just something that I want people to think about. It's not about this, this crap of the middle class is being erased and we need to save the middle class because raising the minimum wage is not gonna fix it. The, at the end of the day, I need to provide products and services for my customers that are competitive in price, which means that I, 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 can't, I, I can't pay people ridiculous wages if they're not able to perform. 
So that means that I'm just not going to pay people those wages, which means that rather than actually be able to learn on the job at a lower wage, they're now, having, they're now going to have to learn on their own. I'm not going to make up job ads for entry-level jobs if I need to pay you $17 an hour. I'm going to put up a job ad for a higher level position at $17 or $21 an hour. How you get the experience, that's your journey, have fun. There's no longer going to be a path to work your way up at some of these businesses if you demand that everybody start out at that wage. And you know, I think we're focusing on the wrong thing. It's really easy as a sound bite. It's really easy to say, do you work hard? Yeah. Do you really bust your ass every day? Yeah. Does your boss care about you? No. You should deserve $15 an hour. I do. It's easy to say that because when you say that, you have all of these individuals that are going to parrot it and you go, yeah, with the crowd mob mentality because it's easy to agree with that. It's hard to look at the cold hard facts that if you want to make more money that you need to increase your value. I'm not going to demand that minimum wage be raised to a salary that's acceptable to me. I'm going to stay up until 3 in the morning doing YouTube videos. And then I'm going to stay up until 3 in the morning putting Amazon affiliate links in the YouTube videos. And then I'm going to stay up until 3 in the morning trying to learn C and C++. I'm trying to add value to what I can offer the world. I want to add value. If I add value to Amazon by bringing them customers to the affiliate program, I make money. If I teach you something that you didn't otherwise know, then that means that I probably make 15 cents a year off of you if you watch my videos, which means I make money. If I learn C and C++ and five years from now, I'm able to do amazing things with it, I'll make money. I'm consistently focusing on, on what I can do so that my worth is higher than minimum wage. What do I need to learn? What skills do I need to learn? Again, I run a business that is very, very profitable. I run a business that is profitable. I can buy Blackberry, wellness court cat food. I can live in this nice apartment that is a three second deco with my Vandersteen Model 3 speakers and my 4K monitor and my camera and all the stuff in front of me and my nice chair. I'm good. Even though I'm doing fine financially, I'm still just doing everything I can to figure out how I can add more value to society. I'm always trying to figure out what is the next thing? What is the next skill? If my business dies today, what am I doing to ensure that I still have a value to society? I'm not thinking, oh, well, if, if I go out of business tomorrow and my skill set is no longer valid, hopefully by then they make minimum wage 15 or 17 an hour so I can go downstairs to the taco place and have a job. It doesn't work like that. I think that we should focus on, 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 what's the word? I don't want to say education because education in our country really sucks and I know that I didn't learn much from it. We should, we should focus on educating ourselves so that we have more skills, so that we, we're more valuable. Because if we're more valuable, it's not going to be about minimum wage. It's not going to be about, I, you can, what would you rather have? What would you rather have for yourself? Would you rather be getting paid a wage because... You can, you can ask it and people are competing to pay you that wage? Or would you rather have somebody begrudgingly write you a check thinking that you're worth shit, but they're only paying you that wage because they're legally required to do so? What would you rather have? Would you rather have somebody that is begging for the opportunity to pay you 75 bucks an hour for your product or service? Or would you rather have somebody that's like, oh, this person's a fucking idiot, but I can't find anybody else and I guess I gotta pay them 16 bucks an hour because that's the law. What would you rather have for yourself? I think, you'd rather have, I think you'd rather have people fighting for the opportunity to pay you because you're so good at what you do. You're so valuable that you're worth it. That feels a lot better, but it's a lot harder to get there than it is to just apply for a minimum wage job and wait for the day that some politician decides that you're worth 15 bucks an hour. Because let me tell you, the politicians may think you're worth $15 an hour. The lawmakers and the lobbyists for this crap may think you're worth 15 bucks an hour because it sounds good for the morning news. But the people who are actually going to employ you are not going to think you're worth $15 an hour. And regardless of what the politicians say, if you have zero experience, if you are worthless in terms of experience at a particular craft, I, in minimum wage of 15 bucks an hour, I'm not going to hire you. I'm going to hire somebody that is more experienced than you and you're not going to be able to get experience, and you're not going to be able to find a job. It's making it more difficult for you. 
Nobody was going to hire me at 15 bucks an hour when I was 16 years old. Just a matter of fact. And outside of the, you know, I had a bike washing business when I was nine. I did the PlayStation modding thing when I was 10. But outside of that, that, that lasted a very, very short period. When I was 16, I wasn't worth, six, I wasn't worth $15 an hour. Like, I still remember working at Avatar Studios. I worked an internship for three months for free, and then after that, I worked for $7.15 an hour, which was minimum wage at the time. Actually, it was $7.50. I, I got paid. I got the big bucks. I got 35 cents above minimum wage. That's why all the P production assistants didn't like me, because they got minimum wage. I got that. I had that, I had that prestige of getting $7.50 instead of $7.15. And it, it comes down, I, a lot of what I was doing was just fixing headphones. I sucked at diagnosing. I sucked at troubleshooting. I sucked at open-ended troubleshooting. Put a Neve 2254 in front of me, I'm not going to fix it. I was not good at it when I first started working there. And it, it wasn't worth 15 bucks an hour. But if I can fix headphones, then I'm worth it. If I'm $15 an hour to the business owner, what, make, what makes more sense, what makes that studio more competitive is making the lead tech stay an hour of overtime to fix all the headphones. But if you can just pay me seven bucks an hour, okay, then it's worth the luxury of having Lewis here a few hours a day. Again, 15 or 20 bucks an hour. Now it's just, okay, let's pay the lead technician one hour of overtime to do all of it rather than pay me three or four hours to do it. And it's because I got to work that job that I got good at what I was doing and then I was able to go on as a freelance technician and make money. I know I've repeated myself, but that's kind of the point. Well, the Dota videos usually scare away the viral subscribers, and I think we're doing a good job of that. But ultimately, just think about this when it comes to minimum wage. I think that you should focus on being worth the salary you're asking rather than demanding it. If you do that, you'll be in much better shape, regardless of what the law is. And this really does bother me with the election, and I know I'm, I'm just moving on and on and on with this, but I feel like every time there's an election, there's this, this, uh, there's this focus on both sides, we need to elect this candidate. And I know Trump has this whole make America great again thing, and it's, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's a trending hashtag, but it's, it's, not, it's not new. Every candidate says that they're gonna bring new jobs. Every candidate says, our unemployment, you know, people, I, I remember hearing this at one of the Trump rallies. It was something along the lines of, a lot of people are not even trying to apply for jobs anymore. And I know he's trying to speak to how, you know, how bad everything is and how he's gonna fix it. But I mean, man, that's, that's not how this shit works. You should be applying for work. You should be looking for opportunity. You, you shouldn't be waiting for somebody to get elected and to fix it for you. You look at anything I'm doing, like if Trump or Hillary get ele elected, it's not gonna affect you know, me and the Amazon thing. It's not gonna affect me and my YouTube revenue. It's not gonna affect whether or not people walk into my store. Who gets elected is not going to affect whether or not I learn C. Who gets elected is not gonna affect, you know, YouTube revenue. It's just, that's something that I have, a ch I choose to affect that, not politicians. It doesn't matter who gets elected when it comes to all these things in my life. And I see that there are so many people that are waiting for somebody else to get elected. They think that when this person gets elected, they're going to change my life. They're going to unfuck my life. And there are so many people that are just so hopelessly fucked because they have this mentality that somebody else is going to come along and fix everything for me. Somebody else is going to come along and, oh, the reason that I'm where I am, it doesn't have to do with, with me. It doesn't have to do with my skill set. It doesn't have to do with the fact that I fuck myself into the, my, these circumstances with my choices. No, it's that the system is pinned against me. It would be really easy to think the system is pinned against you when you're working at two recording studios while going to college that you can barely afford to pay for and getting three hours of sleep a night. But how does thinking about that improve anything? The only thing that's going to improve anything is, is actually increasing your own value. Let's focus on increasing our own value rather than thinking that because we elect one person or the other that our lives are going to become better. And let's focus on increasing our own value rather than, rather than legislating our own value. I like the idea that I'm worth what I'm worth regardless of what a law says. That's it for today.